Hey everyone, welcome back to InfoGamer. I know why you're here. You want to get back to creating your Flappy Bird games in Unity. Now in our last video, we showed you how to finish the basics of a Flappy Bird game. We now have our player movement, so he falls with gravity. When you click the screen, he flaps. We also have death zones. We have our obstacles or our pipes spawning into the scene and moving across the screen and then deleting. We also even have when our player flies successfully through the two pipes, it increments a int value in the player script or the game script. And so we're pretty much done with the basics of our Flappy Bird game, but we want to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing and user-friendly. And so in this video, what we want to do is make it so that our bird has a heavy nose or a heavy end so that when he's falling, he angles himself towards the ground. And so to do this, we want to first collect some information from our game. Now, when we've selected our player in our hierarchy and we click E on the keyboard, we get the rotation tool. You can also get it by clicking this little icon here. We can then click on the circumference of the circle and rotate our character in the Z axis. You can see how it's changing in the inspector. And if I drag him about to right here, we can see that we have a positive angle and I'm going to go with maybe 35. That's a pretty good angle for our bird to be angled up and this is going to happen when we first click the screen or anytime we click the screen and our bird flaps. We want him to start angling up and then we want to have a negative 90 degree angle at the end of his fall. So he's looking straight at the ground. So round about negative 90. Actually, negative 90 is the value that we want. But for now, I'm going to reset him back to zero. Now what we need to do is open our player controller script in Visual Studio. So I'm gonna find it and double click. Once you have it opened in Visual Studios, we need to create a new function and it's going to be called heavy end. So I'm gonna type void and then heavy and end parentheses and curly braces. Inside this function, we need to start by creating a new variable. And this is going to be a float. And we're going to call it angle. And we need to set it equal to the positive 35 degree value that we found in Unity. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create an if statement to check to see whether our character is falling. And so this is going to use our rigid body variable of our player. And we're going to look at the velocity of our character. And we want to more specifically look at just the Y component of our velocity. And we want to compare that to see if it's less than zero. So if our Y velocity is negative, that means that he's falling. If it is negative, we're going to add one line of code that's going to do the majority of the work. And this is to change our angle to be equal to, and then we want to type math f dot lerp. Now the lerp function is a unity specific function that is applied to certain data types. So math f and maybe even vector, vector two, vector threes, they all have lerp functions and they work pretty much the same way. Uh, what a lerp function does is it takes a starting value and an ending value and then it, a time. Those are the parameters and it sh transitions between the starting value 
and the end value according to the time value. And so let's go ahead and add in the parameters to this function. So the first one is going to be are 35 degrees and I don't want to use the angle variable because our angle variable is going to be changing over time. I want to hard code in the 35 degrees. Then the second variable is actually the second value is going to be negative 90. So our starting value is 35, our ending value is negative 90 and our time value is going to be, this part's a little weird, we want to actually use the rigid body's velocity. So rb.velocity.y, and we're going to divide it by 20, just to make it a, a little bit smaller of a number. And we actually don't want to use the positive velocity, but the negative velocity. Once we have that, we can go ahead and end it with a semicolon. And then we need to apply this angle to the rotation of our current object, so our player. So I'm going to call the transform of our player, then rotation, which we don't use very often, but it's always good to know how. And then we're going to set it equal to, and this part gets a little weird, there's two words that we need to type. and you might not have ever heard of them before, but the first one is quan, quaturian, quaturian. And the second one is Euler. So these are both words that essentially mean rotation. Quaternion is a way of calculating rotation, which is very confusing and complex and it would probably take me a whole another video segment to explain it all to you. I don't even know how it works entirely. I get the idea and the concept, but I would have to do more research on it. You don't really need to know what it means, but you need to know the word and how to access it because without it, you can't access the Euler, which is another form of rotation, which is more common and we use it in the inspector, it's the X, Y, and Z values of rotation. Once you've typed these two words, you can then add parentheses and then create a vector three. And so the first value of our vector three is going to be zero because that's the X and zero because that's the Y. And then we want to apply the angle value because that's the Z and that's the component that we were using when rotating our character. We, it was the value that was changing when we were rotating the circumference of the rotation circle. And so once we have that, we can end it with the semicolon. Then what we want to do is add this function to an update. And I'm actually going to use fixed update because that's for physics. Don't really need the private. But for physics code, we add it to the fixed update. And since I'm using velocity, I'm going to, to use it here. Now, it might still work in update, but it won't hurt us to use it in fixed update. But I don't want it to execute all the time. I only actually want to execute it if we're playing the game. And so I'm going to call if and then is start and and it with is go, but I don't want to see if is go is fault, uh, true. I want to see if is go is false, because if it's true, that means we've died. Then inside this if statement, I want to add the heavy end function. Parentheses semicolon. Let's go ahead and save that. Save that and then go back to Unity. Now all we need to do is hit play and see if it works. So we're playing, nothing's happening because we haven't started the game. As soon as I click, our player angles himself up and I, I died. So let me restart. So I hit play, he's angling himself up and as he falls, he rotates down to look at the ground. Pretty cool. Now, 
if you want that rotation to be a little bit faster, all you need to do is look at this line of code and change maybe this tw divided by 20 to be divided by 10 so it, it's not as small of a number. Once we do that, we can go back to Unity, hit play. And I died, of course. Flappy Bird, ah, oh, it's so frustrating. And actually it's rotating slower. So t the smaller the number, the faster it rotates. So if you want it to rotate faster, maybe 30. Let's see how that works. Ah, it's hard to tell. I think it might have been faster with the 10. Ah, you can play around with it. See what feels good to you. I'm probably gonna leave it at 10 because 30 seemed way slow. Yeah, 10's a lot better. 20 was good, but I think 10's a lot better. Awesome, so that's everything that we're gonna cover in this video. We've made it so that our bird now rotates with the speed of its velocity in the Y direction. Now, if there was anything confusing about this tutorial, make sure that you leave any concerns or questions in the comments below. Make sure that you like and subscribe and share with your friends and stay tuned for all our future videos. We'll see you next time.